Okay, so while the Yankees are still reeling, trying to figure out how to win baseball games uh, again with some kind of regularity, I want to go over the financial outlays a little bit of the Yankees' payroll right now and what it's going to look like in 2023 so you know how they can attack this offseason. Um, and I'm going to go over a list of like some of the top free agents, too, just so you know. We'll do a lot more stuff. I'll do free agent predictions. We'll obviously go live during the winter meetings when free agency starts. All these things are going to happen. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do that right now and hit the bell and the notification bell. That way you don't miss this type of stuff because we're going to continue doing this. And obviously we do lineups and recaps every day as well. So, and I'll see you later for the lineup, obviously. But let's get into this. So right now, as we stand with the guys that they brought in, at the trade deadline, their payroll is at $263.1 million. I'm talking about the Yankees, okay? That includes retained salaries from trades, you know, salary they're eating, and new guys, and whatever else, okay? 263.1. Starting in 2023, it's going to go down to $150.2 million. That's a $112.9 million drop. It's actually a lot more than I thought. Um, so that's a really significant uh, layout, and it gives them a lot of flexibility to decide what, what they want to do. I mean, first and foremost, I think, you know, let's just say they were 150. If they get, decide to re-sign Judge, that's going to take it up almost 190 right there, okay? Uh, and then, obviously, more pitching and whatever else they need um, and calling up some guys. I think at this point, they're at the point now where they can call up some of their position players and surround them by a couple of maybe some young, controllable role players and put the team on better footing because the team is playing kind of old and just sluggish and just lifeless. So we needed some, some jolts of energy. I think some of these young guys and some of these other guys will do that for them. But let me just go down the list of top free agents. We've got Aaron Judge, okay, obviously. Um, Trey Turner, shortstop from the Dodgers. Um, Jose Abreu, first base for the White Sox. Carlos Correa and Thor, Noah Syndergaard. Now one thing about Abreu, Correa, and Thor, neither one of those guys can be offered a qualifying offer because they've already been offered them. Everyone else can be, but these three guys are no longer qualifying offer eligible, meaning they will not come with compensatory draft pick, So, which is a plus for an acquiring team. Okay, and then Nolan Arenado is a free agent. Xander Bogarts, Wilson Contreras, the catcher, Andrew Benatendi from the Yankees, Jacob deGrom from the Mets, Carlos Rodon, Chris, uh, Chris Bassett, another pitcher from the Mets that they acquired from the, from the A's. Edwin Diaz, closer from the Mets, who has been lights out, and he's only 28 years old. Apparently, he's. Uh, I think he might be looking to break the the closer record, which I think is Canley Jansen right now. It's him or Aroldis Chapman. So I could I, I could see him getting like five years, 90 million or something like that. I'm just beating it. But he is absolutely filthy this year. And uh, Brandon Nimmo, also from the Mets. Dansby Swanson, the shortstop. The shortstop class can be pretty deep. So you got Swanson, you got Trey Turner, you got Correa. I mean, there's quite a few guys that are going to be available. Um, Justin Verland has got an opt-out. He'll probably be out there. Clayton Kershaw, free agent. Josh Bell, first baseman acquired from the Padres. Um, Trey Mancini, another first baseman, is with the Astros now. Nate Navaldi is pitching with the Red Sox. Sean Manea, starting pitcher with the Padres too. Aroldis Chapman, like I would mentioned, he's also free agent. And then Kenley Jansen, cl uh, closer for the Braves. So these are some of the most notable names that I think the Yankees might be targeting for whatever reason. But if the Yankees have an opportunity to, you know, to call up a couple guys, and keep in mind with the Yankees, they're, I think they're going to be looking to shed three salaries too if they can, right? Josh Donaldson, Aaron Hicks, and Glaber Torres. Now with the exception of Torres, I don't see how they can move Hicks or Josh Donaldson without eating a chunk of contract. And Donaldson's owed $25 million for next year, and then that's it, and then a buyout. And Hicks has three, 10 million a year for the next three years. 23, 24, 25. Okay? So, um, you know, without attaching a decent prospect, significant prospect, I can't see a scenario where the Yankees are going to be able to move these guys. And I don't think they're going to eat the contract like the Mets have done with Cano and just take take the hit. That's not their MO. And they're going to try to trade these guys. Torres is probably the most movable. Okay? He's been in scenarios with pitchers before, trade, trade scenarios. So... I could see him being moved. And then again, they've got Oswaldo Cabrera. They've got Oswald Peraza, some of these young, dynamic infielders who also are learning different infield positions and outfield, particularly Oswaldo Cabrera, who's, I think, a switch hitter. So um, we have some some good potential coming up through the pipeline. So if they you know, bring up a couple of those guys, let's just say they move Torres and Donaldson somehow. You got you have those two infielders to cover right there off the bat. Okay? If you move Hicks... 
Okay, well, they have Harrison Bader to take his place, too. So they have coverage there as well. Um, so it's going to be really, really interesting to see what the Yankees do. Really, really interesting. And again, remember, some guys have qualifying offers. The Yankees need another starting pitcher one way or another. So let's just say, hypothetically, they added Judge, right? They re-signed Judge. Let's just say $38 million. So it takes up to from 150 to 188 And then let's just say they bring in Carlos Rodon. Four years, $80 million. That's another $20 million right off the bat. Okay, once they go from 188 to 208 and then, you know, you've got arbitration raises. You've got these other things, too, that's going to factor into this number as well. But the Yankees, for the first time in a while, have quite a bit more maneuverability. And, you know, they didn't really spend that last offseason. I mean, they were right, right at the cusp already. Um, you know, they made their heavy lift. They did their heavy lifting at the deadline. They made some incremental moves, impactful moves. But, like, the deadline is where they did the most financial. And all those guys that they were acquired at the deadline... We're all pre arb and R players. No one, none of them was on an open contract and out for agency. So that's another kind of a swift financial move for Cashman and the Yankees. So, but I wanted to go over this stuff with you. I wanted you to know what the financial outlays were this year, what we're looking at. Whoops, what we're looking at for next year. You know how much flexibility the Yankees have, and you know which guys would you call up and which kind of major league players, even role players, would you surround them with? I think you know putting the Yankees because they've been playing old sluggish, kind of lifeless, so you put some youth in there, you put some hustle in there, some versatility in there, it's going to look like a different Yankee team next year, and uh, I'm pretty confident that it will, to what degree, we don't know, right, but give me your feedback in the comments, what would you do if you played mock GM, and keep in mind, we'll go live during the winter meetings, we'll go live during all that stuff too, so we're going to continue to have this type of dialogue while we're trying to figure out, while the Yankees are trying to figure themselves out, like while we're waiting patiently for their asses to try to do that. Okay, we want our Yankees to win the division and go to the go deep into the playoffs or even into the World Series. But they have to make adjustments. So several of them, particularly on the offensive side. But that's it right now. Let's get into this a little bit. Let's dive into the numbers. Play mock GM for a little bit. What would you do? And we'll continue to have this conversation. Have a good day, everybody. I'll see you all later for the lineups. Over and out.